In this lecture, we are going to discuss the oxygen lake theory or the nutrients lake theory for the acute control of blood flow. Basically, this is part of our new series of lectures about the local and humoral control of blood flow by the tissues. We have discussed again and again in the last few lectures the tissues themselves have some important role in their control of blood flow and that control of blood flow mainly is through two mechanisms that could be acute control and long term control. Normally each and every tissue different organs of the human body receive different amount of blood and that amount of blood that different organs receive basically changes or increase or decrease according to the needs of the human body. But whenever the needs of the tissue increase or decrease, there are some local and humoral control like the changes at the level of the tissue or changes that the tissue get influenced by the changes or the signals that come from some outside. So basically our focus is on the local changes that occurs in the tissue which changes the blood flow of the tissue but the tissue themselves have, have the role. Now we discussed previously that there are two main mechanisms the rapid control or and the long term control the acute control and the long term control. Then we discussed that the acute control is basically due to the vasodilation or the increase in size of the existing blood vessels and that could be mainly due to the effect of the metabolism like changes in the metabolism rate of the tissues or it could be due to the changes in the oxygen availability of the tissues. So these were the two basic uh, changes which affected the acute control or the rapid control due to which the change in the blood flow occur rapidly in seconds or minutes. Then we discussed the vasodilation theory about the acute control of blood flow like what was uh, we discussed that due to the changes in the me metabolism and changes in the oxygen availability some vasodilatory substances get released in the tissue which basically dilates the vasodilator substances basically dilate the blood vessels which increases the blood flow. Similarly the oxygen leg theory oxygen leg theory also explains the effect of metabolism and oxygen availability on the acute control or the rapid control or the quick control of blood flow to any tissue. So the effect of metabolism was mainly discussed in vasodilatory theory. Now we are discussing the oxygen leg theory. In the oxygen leg theory it is, uh, it is said or according to this theory oxygen is required for smooth muscle contractions. Basically the, uh, the blood vessels, the arterioles, the met arterioles, the capillaries, we have uh, these are the blood vessels. Here we have the arterioles, here we have, here we have the met arterioles, here we have the capillaries and the black color, this one is showing the pre-capillary sphincters. So all these blood vessels are basically made of smooth muscles. Smooth muscles. And smooth muscle basically require oxygen for the contraction. Oxygen is required for the smooth muscle contraction. When the concentration of the supply of the oxygen decreases, concentration or supply of oxygen decreases, it leads to less contraction because oxygen is needed for the contraction of these blood vessels. Oxygen is needed for contraction of these blood vessels. When oxygen is low, the contraction is less so dilation occur. And less, with less oxygen supply, more dilation occur because the muscles in these blood vessels in the wall of these blood vessels they are not receiving oxygen so they are not contraction and they are not contracting and they dilate with the dilation the blood flow increases and it compensates for the decreased oxygen supply now the increased utilization by the tissues if the oxygen is utilized more in the tissue these are the cells this is the tissue and the blood is basically coming through these vessels. If these cells are utilizing more oxygen, more utilization of oxygen, it will lead to decreased availability of oxygen. When more oxygen is being used by these tissue cells, the concentration of oxygen in this tissue will fall. 
and this fall in concentration will lead to decreased concentration of oxygen in the smooth muscles of the blood vessel. This decrease in availability of oxygen to the smooth muscles of the blood vessels it will also lead to vasodilation or increase in the size of dilation, uh, the blood vessel because they cannot they cannot contract because contraction demands oxygen less more oxygen more contraction less oxygen less contraction so more oxygen will lead to more contraction and less flow less oxygen will lead to more uh, less oxygen will lead to less contraction and more flow now we here in this diagram we can see that we have precapillary sphincters precapillary sphincters here we have the arterioles here we have the met arterioles arterioles and the met arterioles and they are basically emptying in this capillary and the capillary is supplying the blood to the tissues but before this blood comes into the capillary here we have this precapillary sphincter here we have these precapillary sphincter now the precapillary sphincters they are also made of smooth muscles they are also made of smooth muscles smooth muscles and the contraction of the smooth muscles in these precapillary sphincters is directly proportional to the requirement of the tissue uh, like the the number of precapillary sphincters that are open is directly proportional to the requirement of the tissue if the requirements of the tissue is more like tissue is requiring more oxygen then more precapillary sphincters will be open because oxygen will be consumed so the muscles this the smooth muscles that are present in the precapillary sphincters they will be receiving less oxygen so they will not be able to contract so when they will not be able to contract they will remain open but if the concentration if the requirement of the tissue falls if the requirement of the tissue decreases then oxygen in this blood will increase oxygen will increase when oxygen will increase more oxygen will be available to the precapillary sphincters to the smooth muscles of the precapillary sphincters because more aware a more oxygen is available then they will be able to contract more forcefully and the precapillary sphincters will close so with decreasing demands the precapillary sphincters close with increasing demands the precapillary sphincters open and that's because the number of precapillary sphincters open are directly proportional to the requirements of the tissue and that's due to the oxygen because when more oxygen is consumed less oxygen is available for the contraction and they cannot contract and they remain open but when less oxygen is consumed uh, when less oxygen is consumed more is uh, more oxygen is available to them and they contract and they they the, the precapillary sphincters are closed but when oxygen is consumed more by the tissue then less is available there and they are not able to contract and they remain open so the the, the number of precapillary sphincters that are open is directly proportional to the tissues the requirement of the tissues now the strength of contraction increase with increase in oxygen concentration so that's something the strength of the contraction of this precapillary sphincter it increases when the oxygen availability is more or more concentration of oxygen is there so that's something we discussed that the oxygen lag theory says that the blood vessels are basically made of smooth muscles and smooth muscles require oxygen for the contraction if the amount of oxygen in the blood is coming is less then they will not be able to contract and they will relax more blood will flow and the tissue will receive more flow more oxygen but uh, when the oxygen demand in the tissue is less then more blood is available to the muscle when more blood oxygen is available to the smooth muscle of the precapillary sphincter they contract they contract and less of the blood is coming so basically the, this is a mechanism the oxygen lag theory explains a mechanism with the help of which we can explain the acute control the rapid control these changes occur basically rapidly when when someone starts exercising and here these tissues for example the muscles 
these the, due to exercise they start consuming more and more oxygen then more and more sphincters open more and more blood flow starts so the control the acute control that occurs rapidly in minutes to seconds to minutes and that that acute control previously explained by the vasodilatory vasodilatory theory or vasodilator theory is also being explained by the oxygen lack theory so that's all about the oxygen lack theory thanks a lot for watching the video